was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl, conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free. It was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's well, smoke and mirrors. Everybody, to resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN Network. I do hope that everybody is doing well tonight. I, Lori Anderson, am hosting tonight along with Tom Lacavera Stewart who will also be involved with the radio show tonight as well. He'll be in. Hello. Hi. How are you doing tonight, Tom? I'm doing great. And we have uh, some news that has been being suppressed by the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. And it's no wonder that, that Hillary Clinton is uh, having health problems. Right, right, right. I noticed that. You know, um, <clears throat> many people are focused on that little uh uh, what what did they call it? They didn't call it a feigning spell. Oh, collapsing spell. That's what it was. And diversion. Main, diversion. Yeah. And, and one thing our listeners know, that if mainstream media is so focused on something so uh, crazy, I guess, if you will, there's always something in the background. Isn't that right, Tom? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what I found out was I normally when when mainstream media is focused so hard on the things that are really simple, I usually start digging in the opposite direction. As you well know, I will dig whether it be government uh, oversight committee or whether it be um, United Nations. There's always something going on behind the scenes. So what I want to go ahead and let our listeners know, have you. Or did you realize that there was a huge hearing about the OPM data breach? Now, their report came out September the 7th, and it's amazing what you really find out about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover a little bit of this um, on different aspects. I'm going to cover first the September 7th, 2016 Letter. Now, this letter was written by Jason, Representative Jason Chavez, and it was written to Mr. Dodaro. Okay. And what it states is this We are writing to call your attention to an apparent Anti Deficiency Act, or the ADA, for those who don't know, violation by the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, or OPM. You'll you'll hear OPM a lot in here. That's what it's referring to. We request that you render an opinion regarding whether OPM violated the ADA when the agency accepted services from a company, SciTech Services, LLC, without payment and take additional action as appropriate. The relevant section of the ADA states, and this is a quote, an officer or employee of the United States government or the District of Columbia government may not accept voluntary services for either government or employee personnel services exceeding that authorized by law except for emergencies involving the safety of human life or the protection of property. In brief, we believe OPM violated the ADA when the agency retained and deployed SciTech software following a product demonstration and never paid. On April the 21st, 2015, SciTech demonstrated its Cypher, spelled C-Y-F-I-R, tool at OPM's headquarters in Washington, D.C. Following the demonstration, OPM staff represented they intended to purchase licenses to deploy SciTech software in various places throughout the agency. The next day... SciTech, relying on the government's verbal request, began expanding the scope of the software services that were installed for the demonstration and provided a license to OPM for 1,000 endpoints that expired on June 30th of 2015. 
During the period in question, SciTech personnel also provided incident response services to OPM and installed related hardware. Documents and testimony obtained by the committee show that OPM retained SciTech's equipment for months after the demonstration and used at least some of the software licenses. The documents and testimony also show OPM never paid SciTech for these services. The facts are described in greater detail in an enclosed committee report, the OPM data breach, how the government jeopardized our national security for more than a generation. Yes, you heard that right, everybody. For more than a generation. Than a generation. <laughs> that was the letter from Chairman Jason Chavez. Um, Chavez, excuse me. I hate that I mispronounced it. Chavez. Chavez. Thank you. I always do that, and I, I apologize to him for that, even though he's probably not listening. Um, so, sorry, sorry, Chad. Sorry, Chavi. Exactly. We're <laughs> definitely not. I'm tr not intentionally trying to chop up your name. Okay. So at this overhouse, this oversight um, and uh, government reform committee, they had hearings, and the hearings were actually posted September the seventh. Now. In this um, document that they gave out, which you can get on the government website itself, listen to what is said that the damage is done, Tom. And I'm going to name names on who said this. Quote, this is Crown Jewels material, a gold mine for a foreign intelligence service. This is not the end of American human intelligence, but it is a significant blow. Joel Bren Brenner, former NSA senior counsel. We cannot undo this damage. What is done is done, and it will take decades to fix. John Schneider, former NSA officer. The SF-86 gives, away, gives you any kind of information that might be a threat to the employee's security clearance. Jeff Neal, former DHS official. My SF-86 lists every place I've ever lived since I was 18 years old, every foreign travel I've ever taken, all of my family, their addresses, so it's not just my identity that is affected. I've got siblings, I've got five kids, and all of that is in there. Guess who said it? James Comey, director of the FBI. OPM data remains a treasure trove of information that is available to the Chinese until the people represented by the information age off. There is no fixing it, says Michael Hayden, former director of the CIA. So those are just some of the comments before we get into um, some of the things that were found in this. And the reason I'm bringing this up Obviously, this is covering, uh, for any of you who don't understand this, this is covering federal employees' information from social security numbers to uh, home addresses, every bit of personal information, any kind of anything to do with a background check for security clearances. And if you know when you're a federal employee and you're trying to get a security clearance, they do 10 years and sometimes even more further back to get your information to make sure that you can pass this clearance. Well, not just your information, but the information of your 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 immediate family. Right, your immediate family. Sometimes they even go to grandparents. You know, they they'll children, grandchildren, uh, different aspects of that. But I'm going to tie something in later after we go over this that is a concern of mine uh, that I think actually very well could be tied into this. So this is what's in the executive summary. It states that none of these data breaches, though compared to the data breaches of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, OPM, in what appears to be a coordinated campaign to collect information on government employees, attackers exfiltrated personnel files of 4.2 million 
former and current government employees and security clearance background investigation information on 21.5 million individuals. Additionally, fingerprint data of 5.6 <laughs> million of these individuals was stolen. So even if I don't read anything else, now let me ask you a question, Tom, because here's my thing. We know that they use a lot of NGOs to go through the, o the OPM, right? But yep. when they start talking about background checks, how do we know, and I'm not saying it is, okay, but this is just you and I talking back and forth. This is us talking to our listeners. Give us a call. Let us know what you think. Do you think that the quote-unquote federal background check system has any links possibly to this? And if so, has millions of Americans information also been included in that? That's a possibility. We don't know that for a fact. But if these uh, different offices um, are handling the fingerprinting, they're, they're handling the background checks, why would it be so far-fetched to assume that they may just also handle the background checks when it comes to your right to own and be armed? Ah, uh, there you have it. With your 14th Amendment U.S. government uh, uh, employee citizenship um, that you have to utilize to request your permission to uh, concealed carry. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting how uh, the background checks into that actually kind of view you, uh, for those of you who understand the 14th Amendment, as a federal employee. It just, just saying, it's kind of ironic uh, situation there. Right, exactly. So that's just something that, that went into my head. That was something I was pondering as I'm reading this. Um, and I was shocked that, and I'm not going to say mainstream media has not covered it, but I will tell you I haven't seen mainstream media say a peep for it. Now, I do know that they covered it a year ago, but this is new. This is when mainstream media was worried about Hillary Clinton's collapse. And... Um, and all that good little stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you would, Mike, uh, let's go ahead and play video one of Representative Jason Chavez. Um, for Chavitz. Chavitz. I will get it right. I promise to my listeners I will get it right if it if it just chokes me. Okay. Sorry, uh, sorry, Chavi. I am so sorry. I always I don't know what it is about that name. I cannot get it to click with me. Um, it's but, okay. it, but Mike, if you would, um, uh, can you play video one, please? Pressing on his schedule. Um, uh, last week, uh, it, we learned that uh, the United States of America may have had what may be the most devastating cyber attack in our, our nation's history. And that this may have been happening over a long period of time. As we sit here this morning, there's a lot of confusion about exactly what personal information for millions of current and former federal employees and workers were exposed through the light, latest data breach at the Office of Personnel Management. OPM initially reported that the personnel information of more than 4 million federal employees was exposed during this attack. More recent public reports suggest that the breach was perhaps much worse than that. It's also unclear exactly what information was exposed. We would like to know what information was exposed over what period of time and who has this vulnerability. It would also be great to know who had conducted this attack. And I think we need to be, have candor with not only the federal employees but the American people as well. The breach potentially included highly sensitive personal background information collected through the security clearance applications. We would like clarity on that position as well. The loss of this information puts our federal workforce at risk, particularly our intelligence officers and others working on sensitive projects throughout the globe. But we're concerned about each and every federal worker and the public who has uh, interacted with the government and entrusted this information with the government. We need to understand why the federal government and OPM in particular ah, is struggling to guard public. some of our nation's most important information. 
and the fact that OPM was breached should come as no surprise, given its troubled track record on data security. This has been going on for years, and it is inexcusable. Each year, the Office of Inspector General reviews and rates its respective agencies' compliance, compliance with the Federal Information Security Standards. According to this latest, the last eight years of IG reports, OPM's data security posture was akin to leaving all the doors and windows open in your house and expecting that nobody would walk, walk in and nobody would take any information. How wrong is <laughs> that? 2007, the OPM Inspector General rated OPM's data security as, quote, a material weakness, end quote, because the agency had no IT policies or procedures that could come anywhere close to something that could be used as an excuse for securing the information. It's unbelievable to think the agency charged with maintaining and protecting all personal information for, of almost all former and current federal employees would have had so few information technology policies or procedures in place. Let me just kind of read through some of the reports that have happened through the course of the years. This is, from, this is the Inspector General from two, fiscal year 2009. This year, we are ex expanding the material weakness to include the agency's overall information security governance programs and incorporating our concerns about the agency's information security management structure. The continuing weakness at OPM's information security program results result directly from inadequate governance. Most, if not all of, all, of the exceptions we noted in this year resulted from a lack of necessary leadership, policy, and guidance. Go to fiscal year 2010. We continue to consider the IT security management structure insufficient. Insufficient staff and the lack of policies and procedures to be a material weakness in OPM's IT security program. Fiscal year 2011. We continue to believe that the information security governance represents a material weakness at OPM's IT security program. Fiscal year 2012. Throughout fiscal year 2012, the OC. I.O., the Office of the Chief Information Officer, continued to operate with a decentralized IT security structure that did not have the authority or resources available to adequately implement new policies. However, the material witness remains open in this report as the agency's IT security function remained decentralized throughout fiscal year 2012, FISMA reporting period, and because of the continued instances of noncompliance with FISMA requirements. Ha okay, you can go ahead and later. stop. However, okay. so as you hear that, listen to this. This is why I am not only bringing this to attention of federal employees. Hopefully, we have some listening in so that you will be aware. Um, also, to every person within the United States of America, you heard that right, legal or illegal. Okay, listen to this. The government of the United States of America has never before been more vulnerable to cyber attacks. No agency appears safe. In recent data breaches, hackers took information from the United States Postal Service, the State Department, the Nuclear bing, Regulatory bing, 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 bing. Sorry. Uh -huh the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and the IRS, and even the White House. Now, you tell me, do we, the regular, 100%, the real government, we the people, not have a reason to be concerned because of those quote-unquote background checks that they're doing for our Second Amendment? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. I think maybe Hillary Clinton probably said to herself, well, why the hell bother being secure when nobody else is? <laughs> why? Oh, Lord. Right. Something like that. Yeah. You know, um, all she has to do is wipe it with the cloth, Tom, and, and, and she doesn't like it. <laughs> you know, so uh, this well. should be front page news. Everywhere. Everywhere. Because not only federal employees, you're talking about, because you have to add it up, you're looking at 21.5 million individuals for the clear, security clearance background inf in investigation information. Then you're looking at attacks or the personnel files of 4.2 million, so you have to add that in. And then additionally, 5.6 million fingerprints were stolen. 
Well, you might as well, you know, uh, you know, just thinking back to the, uh, the spies. I mean, spies would, huh, they would be salivating at such information. Do you realize that some of some of the departments and some of the positions in government um, require uh, are you know a, a degree of of anonymity. Um, you know, we're talking about CIA. We're talking about Department of Homeland Security. We're talking about Defense Intelligence Agency. We're talking about so many every agency and every federal employee and what they have at their disposal. We're talking about uh, uh, folks at the at the at the National uh, Laboratory in Tennessee, uh, the nuclear uh, stockpiles. We're talking about. Every aspect of everything, oh my lord. Their health records, everything. Um, it, 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 it says in here, it says the significance of what the attacker stole. It says certain individuals apply for a security clearance to gain access to our country's most sensitive national security secrets. These individuals are required to complete a standard form 86 or an SF-86 and undergo a background investigation. Many applicants are obvious targets by adversaries for intelligence purposes by virtue of their holding some of the most sensitive positions in our government, including anyone accessing accessing classified information and anyone employed in a national security sensitive position. This encompasses a wide range of federal employees and contractors at all federal agencies. It didn't say some, at all federal agencies including the U.S. Department of Defense and throughout the intelligence community. Background investigations conducted on these individuals are designed to identify the type of information that could be used to coerce an individual to betray their country. Therefore, applicants are required to provide a wealth of information about their past activities and lifestyle. For example, applicants are required to provide provide extensive financial information, so you're talking bank accounts, as well as employment history, home addresses for the past 10 years. Applicants are also required to provide the names of any relatives, including step-siblings or half-siblings and their home addresses. The SF-86 also requests disclosure of some of the most intimate and potentially embarrassing aspects of a person's life, including whether the applicant Consult it with a healthcare professional regarding an emotional or mental health condition, illegally used any drugs or controlled substances, abused alcohol resulting in a negative impact on work performance, experienced financial problems due to gambling. In short, the SF-86 asks individuals to turn over their most personal details. Information in the wrong hands could be used for espionage purposes now national security as we once understood or thought it to be folks is a wrap it's yeah. over with there yeah. is no national security available in the united states now literally anybody with any single thing to hide or that or that they would not want uh, publicized or that could be used against them we have now essentially given uh, intelligence agencies around the world carte blanche to extort, intimidate, and turn any federal employee right into the Pentagon. Uh, this is and 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 keep in mind. I want people to hear this for a moment. When when people have said, "Well, 9/11, you would have had a lot had to have a lot of support, a lot of people behind that." Let me let me tell you something. Let me just let this sink in for a moment. This has been happening for a very long time. Mm -hmm. National security, as we once understood it to be, is a wrap. And mm -hmm. it is not in the Wall Street Journal. It is not on Fox News. It is not on CNN. You're hearing it here. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't think that this is big, this is, this is one of the biggest stories that should, this should be everywhere. I, yeah. I don't even know how they can recover from this. And, and even Chavez said that this could be years before they ever recover from this because you're talking about people in positions of government that would literally have to work until they retire for them to not be a target anymore. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, just putting it out there to those uh, 
individuals who hacked this, if you found those lost emails of Hillary Clinton's, <laughs> feel yeah, send them over so we, can, yeah. we will gladly expose them. Just saying. Um, yeah, might as well. But they've also, in this hearing, okay, they also, individuals that are such high security clearance because they're maybe in a, a foreign nation or doing whatever, uh, the protected names and stuff like that of our covert agents or maybe our um, people who are working with us to give us intel. Presidents, um, former presidents and their private activities. They're all their names and stuff. This is a uh, part of it as well. And that is really bad. Now, this this illusion. Really and, and bad. You, yeah. And you know that this is an illusion, Tom. Homeland Security. I love it. I love it. They always try to get everybody. Well, we need more money because we need to protect you. And they protect honestly nothing. They can't even secure and protect a border. What do they do? They shuffle illegal immigrants anywhere in the United States of America and drop them off as per, you know, was done. So getting back to this, before I go into the next um uh, spew about this OPM data breach because this really, 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 really needs to get out there. And everybody, please share this. Share this. Yes. It's n- not getting out anywhere. Um. So if you would, Mike, if you could play video two, it'd be greatly appreciated, dear. Clip two. Nice and still for five minutes, Miss Archuleta. I question for you is how big was this attack? How many federal workers? have been compromised. We've heard 4 million, we've heard 14 million. What's the right, what's the right number? Your microphone, please. Sorry. During the course of the ongoing investigation into the cyber intrusion of OPM, the compromise, the current, the personnel records of current and formal, former federal employees that we announced last week, we, that number is for approximately 4.2 million. In addition, in the investigation of that breach, we discovered, as I mentioned in my testimony, an additional OPM system was compromised. And these systems included um, information based on the background investigations of current, former, and prospective federal government employees, as well as other individuals. Because different agencies feed into OPM background investigation systems in different ways, we are working with the agencies right now to determine how many of their employees were affected. We do not have that number uh, at this time, but we will get back to you once we What's have your more best estimate? Is the 14 million number wrong or accurate? As I said before, we do not have an estimate because we are, this is an ongoing investigation. How far back does it go? The information that you're talking about, you're talking about former employees, current employees, and potential employees. So how far back does this information go? All right, pause it right there. Pause it right there. We'll pick up where we left off on the other side. Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast, the biggest data breach in U.S. history. We'll be back. Hang with us. Woo! This is the most transparent administration in history. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Are you still looking for that one iodine that you can really trust? A medical doctor-endorsed product that is backed by honest research and true integrative science. Then search no further. Go to Nutramedical.com for Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutriodine, proven time and time again to be the very best iodine available for you. Nutriodine is the only Tesla-activated monatomic plasma iodine in the world. It optimizes mitochondrial function and generation of new mitochondria from totally neutralizing the venom from a desert recluse spider bite in Southern California to eliminating malaria parasites reported by medical missionaries in Central India. Dr. Bill's Nutriodine is simply 
the most powerful healing formula there is. Nutriodine clears the body of all known pathogens, restores it to an alkaline state, and even promotes stem cell regeneration. Order Dr. Bill's Nutriodine today at 888-212-8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Hi, my name is Chris. Since the 1970s, I have been actively making products available that support good health. What makes my juices flow is helping mankind get healthy. Today, I'm going to tell you about a product that will help your juices to flow. I am excited to recommend Dr. Miller's Holy Tea to you. Even if we are eating a clean diet, these impurities are entering our bodies. Holy Tea moves these poisons that are creating havoc with our health out of our bowels. It works on the whole digestive system. The five tasty herbs are combined to provide an amazing detoxifying and healing tea that will rid your body of the pollutants and soothe your digestive tract, and in some cases, help you lose weight. It is critical for our health to move all of the environmental toxins from our bodies. The holy tea can do that. As a hydrocolon therapist, remember, with every BM, you're supporting RBN. www.holytea.org. 800-326-2001. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong part and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not, or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855-2-KEEP-IT the number two, keep it today. You, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Stattmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and of course you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at NumanaRepublic.com. That's N-U-M-A-N. NNA Republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. Mother of the poor rich milk and sales, close the sea of tears. With no provisions, welcome back. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN. The Republic Broadcasting Network, because you can handle the truth. Now, right before we get back to this clip, I want you to really sit and think about. Generals, admirals, lieutenant colonels, people that are ensconced in the military industrial complex. And I'm not just talking about folks that work for the Department of Defense. I'm talking about non governmental organizations and those that require security clearances, contractors. You know, it, it seems to me. We just had a, a, a spy ring of, of some 140 people that were arrested right after 9-11. Um, kind of funny how they were so quickly and readily and easily available to tap into certain information and to have certain information about where everything was going to go down, how it was going to go down. We're talking about security and exchange commission investigation information into insider trading. We're talking about everything that you could possibly imagine. This is, this should be, this is, this is the biggest story, most probably in the world, but most certainly in the country right now. 
and all we're hearing about is the possibility of Hillary Clinton having a body double. <laughs> oh, wait, I got to tell you a funny. I got to tell you a funny because I couldn't believe this, but Fox News even said it was a body double. Oh, well, you know what? It, it's it's such a dog and pony bread and, and circus show. And who cares? Show. I don't care at this point. I care about the security of our people. Yeah, and and that's what they you want. They want to focus you on on this 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 bread and circus. This uh, uh, this is just uh, um, this is this is crap for the minds. Uh, these people. I don't even actually. You know what? I wouldn't even care if she did have a body double at this point. It doesn't. At, at, the, at what? Wait a minute. Let me say it. At this point, what difference does it make? <laughs> oh no, I did it. But I'm bump. Look, I'm laughing, but I'm inside. I'm crying. Look, folks, I'm doing the first for the first time ever in doing my show. I am pulling out a bottle of Jack Daniels and pouring a drink and saying, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Well, that's okay. Oh, I do have. Some, wow. Even though I'm I'm breaking this right here for everybody, I want you to know, hang with us because I do have some excellent news that just broke today. So, I will tell you that after we get through the bad news. Okay, yeah, okay. Oh, we have to get, we, we, we need to finish the rest of this clip. So, okay, let, let's get back to the clip and we'll be right back. Go ahead. Yes. The information that you're talking about, you're talking about former employees, current employees, and potential employees. So, how far back does this information go that was in your system? Thank you for that question, Mr. Chaffis. I'm a, I, I would have to respond again is because it's an ongoing investigation. It has nothing to do impeding an investigation. You should know what information you have and what you don't. So this is not going to slow down any investigation. People have a right to know. The employees have a right to know. How far back does your information database go that was compromised? The legacy systems date back to 1985, but I do not. So anything that's 1985? No, sir, it would not be correct. You don't know. Does it include military personnel? As I said, um, this is an This is a yes-no question. Does it include military personnel? I would be glad to discuss that in a classified setting. In other words, yes. Does it include contractor information? Again, I would be glad to uh, discuss that in a classified setting. There's nothing classified as to what information this includes. Does it include CIA personnel? I would be glad to discuss that in a classified setting. Does it include anybody who's filled out SF-86, the standard form 86? The uh, individuals who have uh, completed an SF-86 and, um, and may be included uh, in that, and we can provide additional information in a classified setting. Why wasn't this information encrypted? Um, the encryption is one of the many tools that systems can use. I'll look to my colleagues at DHS for their response. Can you pause no, I, I, I want to know from you. Just, just, just for a second. Pause that just for a second. I, you know, I have to say that, that I've been very critical about mm -hmm. some individuals that have worked for the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. This man is looking at this nitwit, mm -hmm. and he is giving her a straight question in a committee hearing, and we have heard this and seen this one too many times. You have given the information to every enemy that we have, but they can't give it to us. Right. How yep. insane. In a yep. classified setting, in a classified setting, this is world news. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go right. ahead. So, so just before you pick up on the video, notice when they want to talk about it in a classified setting, they're, they're mentioning CIA. They're mentioning of course. our military. They're mentioning all of that. So you know what that means. That means absolutely yes, but we refuse to say so publicly because we know the American public would be irate because that covers pretty much everybody on the land in the United States of America when you're looking at all of it. Oh, okay. Roll, roll the clip. Go ahead. Let's keep going. Why the information wasn't encrypted. It's personal sensitive information. Birth yeah. dates, social security numbers, background information, addresses. Why wasn't it encrypted? Data information uh, encryption is a valuable... Uh, yeah, it's valuable. Why wasn't it? 
and it is an industry best practice. In fact, our cybersecurity framework promotes encryption as a key protection method. Why didn't Accordingly, you? OPM oh, pause, just pause. We I'm didn't ask sorry. You. Is this not reminiscent of one of these telemarketers reading off of a freaking script? Yes. Yes, we know how important it is. Yes, we know that it's an industry standard. So, in other words, why in the hell weren't you using it, you nitwit? I encrypt what? my phone, and I'm not a government employee or have personal oh, records. Oh, my Lord have mercy. Folks, you're listening to this show. I hope that you call in with your comments. I really hope that you take the time of, of every show that we've done. This would be the one that I really would love to hear your comments. Okay, continue to roll that clip. Pay highly close attention how much money we've spent on this, by the way. The OPM does utilize encryption. We didn't ask you to come read statements. I want to know why you didn't encrypt the information. An adversary possessing proper credentials can often decrypt data. It is not feasible to implement on networks that are too old. The limitations on encryptions is effective on the encryptions our effectiveness is why OPM is taking other steps such as limiting okay, so administrators accounts and requiring multi-factor authentication. Okay, well it didn't work. So you failed, okay? You failed utterly and totally. So the Inspector General uh, November 12, 2014, we recommend that the OPM director consider shutting down information systems that do not have current and valid authorization. And Oops. you chose not to. Why? I appreciate the uh, report by the, the oh, IG. Oh, shut up, lady. Very closely with IG, with our IG, and take very seriously. Okay, but he had a very serious recommendation to shut down the system. That's how bad it was. And you said no. I'd like to turn that over to my... No, team. I would like you to answer that question. You get to make the... It says, we recommend that the OPM director consider shutting it down. Your response was, the quote, the response back to the uh, office of the... Uh, from the office of chief in, uh, information officer, quote, the IT program managers will work with the ISSOs to ensure that OPM systems maintain current ATOs and that there are no interruptions to OPM's mission operation. Basically, you said no. The inspector general was right. Your systems were vulnerable. The data was, was not encrypted. It could be compromised. They were right uh, last year. They recommended it was so bad that you shut it down, and you didn't. And I want to know why. There are many um, responsibilities we have with our data. And to shut down the system, we need to consider all of the responsibilities we have with the use of our systems. So you made a conscious decision, knowing that it was vulnerable, that all these millions of records for federal employees was out there. You, the inspector general pointed out the vulnerability, and you said, no, we're not making a change. As the director of OPM, I have to take into consider a consideration all of the work that we must do. It was my a decision that we would not, but continue to develop the um, the uh, the system and making sure that we have the the security within those systems. The recommendation. And did you do that? The you did. It did, 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 did. didn't happen, did it? The recommendation after. Uh, the recommendation to close down our systems came after the adversaries were already in our network. When did they, get in? When did the they get in the network? of our uh, security systems that we were able to uh, detect this intrusion. When did they get into the system? We detected the intrusion in April of 2015. So, but how did you know in November of 2014 that they were already, you didn't know <laughs> if they were in there, did you? No, we did not. We did not have the systems in we did not have the security systems installed at that time. It was because and the we were able to add those security systems that we were able to detect. So you detected the system? It wasn't a, it wasn't a software provider that protected? You o found it yourself? OPM detected the, the intrusion. So the New York Times and the others who wrote, it, wrote that were wrong? That's correct. Two more questions with your indulgence here. How many people have received letters? 
there's a, a rolling um, number as we work from the first date of uh, notification, January 8th, we will complete the notification to 4.2 million by, Janu uh, by June 19th. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact date uh, number as of today. I'd be glad to get that information for you. One last question with everybody's indulgence here. Uh, Ms. Archuleta, there was a data breach at OPM in July of 2014. Okay. This is what you said about your Ms. Seymour. In December, I was very fortunate to bring Donna Seymour from the Department of Defense on board. She has great experience with IT world and brought her talents to OPM. It was because of her leadership and her dedicated employees that we were able to make sure that none of this personal identifiable information was compromised. This was July of 2014. You, you cited her with the data breach as making sure that none of the personal identif identifiable information got out the door. Now that it has been hacked, are you going to give her that same amount of credit? I do give her that same amount of credit. Sir, when I began my tenure as the director of OPM, my first, one of my first priorities was to develop an IT strategic plan and to develop the important pil pillar of cybersecurity within our systems. We have worked very hard since that time, and as we update these legacy systems, please stop working that so we hard. That there is a right. persistent and aggressive effort on the part of these actors to not only intrude in our system but systems throughout. Uh, throughout government and indeed in the private sector. Well, you have completely and utterly failed in that, that mission, if that was sector. your objective. The Inspector General has been warning about this since 2007. There have been breach after breach. He recommended shutting it down last year, and you, you made a conscious decision to not do that. You kept it open, the information was vulnerable, and the hackers got it. I don't know if it's the Chinese, the Russians, or wherever else, but they've got it. And they're going to prey upon the American people. That's their goal and objective. And you made a conscious decision to leave that information vulnerable. It was the wrong decision. It was in direct contradiction to what the Inspector General said should happen. And you've been warning about it for years. I would note that in the IG's report that he acknowledges the fact that we've taken important steps in uh, in reforming our IT systems. Advanced tools take time. So what kind of grade would you give yourself? Are you succeeding am, or failing? I am, I am, uh, cybersecurity NF. problems take decades. We don't have decades. Our they don't take decades. I'm sorry. Cybersecurity problems are decades in the making. <laughs> Whole of government re is responsible and it will take all of us to solve the issue and continue to work on them. My leadership in this uh, particular, uh, uh, in, with OPM is one that instigated, instigated the improvements and changes that were recognized, that recognized the attack. Yield back. I recognize the uh, ranking member, Mr. Cummings, for as much time as he wants. Thank okay. you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ms. You Seymour, can uh, go uh, ahead and Ms. stop that. Now, I want to point out $80 billion, okay? $80 billion was spent on authentication systems, and we have this issue. Now, in the report, it states, Despite the high-value information maintained by OPM, the agency failed to prioritize cybersecurity and adequacy secure and adequately secure high-value data. The OPM Inspector General warned since at least 2005 that the information maintained by OPM was vulnerable to hackers. In 2014, the IG upgraded issues surrounding information security governments, governance but, at but OPM. Lurie, but Lori, but Lori, but Lori. She said that she made steps. Roll that clip. Roll, roll that clip. Bob, there is a groundbreaking new book that has just come out. Ah. Now, not everything in this book, of course, applies to you, but I'm sure that you can see, when you see the title, exactly how it could help. Mm. Baby steps? It means setting small, reasonable goals for yourself, one day at a time. 
one, one day at tiny time. step at a time. Baby steps. For instance, um, when you leave this office, don't think about everything you have to do in order to get out of the building. Just think of what you must do to get out of this room. And when you get to the hall, deal with that hall and so forth. You see? Baby steps. Baby steps. Oh, boy. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps through the office. Baby steps out the door. It works. It works. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> All I have to do is take one little step at a time, and I can do anything. Hmm. Baby step around the office. <laughs> Baby step around the office. Oh my, my my I just I couldn't resist. <laughs> that is that We got is a couple cool. callers, just letting you know. Just okay. letting you know, Lord, we got a couple callers on. Okay, I will get to them in, in just a second. So I Okay, wanted, all right, go ahead. To let everybody know that that what this says is the OPM inspector general warned since at least two thousand and five that the information maintained by OPM was vulnerable to hackers. Okay. Now I'm not um going to go into the hacker thing because sometimes it's a false flag event but anyway aside from that point the data has been breached it has been gotten a hold of so that's the important thing for everybody to know in 2004 yeah. the ig upgraded issues surrounding information security governments at opm for material weakness okay here is the kicker tom i bet you that i can save them billions of dollars hold up and fix the problem all at the same time and and make sure that people's information is secure. Are you ready for this? Uh, you mean it, it, does that require a rope? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But think about this. It's called the old-fashioned way. Personnel file not on computer. Oh yes. my God! Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Then you then hackers couldn't hack into it. Now you would have possibilities of people trying to go get the files, but if you've got, oh, they'd have to bribe them the old-fashioned way. They would have to do it the old-fashioned way, and they could have it, of course, heavily secured. God forbid we go back to the old-fashioned way to make sure. Millions upon millions and possibly people who are not working for the federal government. Because as, as I told you, in this document, it tells you, right? It tells you that the United States Postal Service, the State Department, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, IRS, oh. DOD, you name it, even up to the White House. And then they have a timeline, Tom. Okay? So oh. it, in the timeline... July 2012 is the beginning of the timeline. First known adversarial access to OPM's network was based on malware found in 2015. Three years later. So the first breach that they know of a, for a fact is all the way in 2012. This could go back to all the way 1989 is what the lady said. Isn't that what she said in the congressional hearing? Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, we got callers backing up. We got to get to them. <laughs> okay, let's get to caller number one. Ed in Kentucky, you're on. Come on, Ed. Hi, how are you doing tonight? Hey, guys. How you doing? Oh, by the way, Tom, thanks for last yep. night. I appreciate that. No problem, my brother. 9-11 um, is not a good week for me. I'm sorry, but it, it's not. I know it. I know it. Amen. It's, it's and, not. And, and when I heard that show last night, I, I felt compelled that I owed somebody an apology. Well, that was very, you know what, that was, that was, uh, that was very big of you, brother. Well, that's how I was raised. You mess up, you man up. Regardless that's right. Of the that's right. Well, shalom to both of you. I right. love both of you. But here's the thing. They have ITs working 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now, these people even work at home. Mm -hmm. they, sure get a little, they get a little ding-ding if something goes on. They get a little ding-ding 
Yeah, and now and now now our enemies know where all their homes are. (laughs) Wow. Now, see, here's how the system was set up. When a car is sent and they get they get picked up, they're working Mm -hmm. while they're going to work. That they're constantly working on the system. Okay. Now, I'm not blaming the ITs because we got the best in the world. Right. The best in the world. Mm -hmm. Now. It, the thing is, it's. I want to. I don't want to call them the lead because they're falling, they're failing, they're idiots, the so-called idiots that think they run something. They allowed this. Well, guess what? You exposed yourselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's, yep. not, it's not and the it, lower. It's the no, uppers it's that are no. telling them no. It's the uppers it's, that told them okay, no. Okay. Okay. Let's let Soros, Rothschilds. Yep. Uh, Cheney, Bush, Saudi family, MI5, MI6, CIA, name the alphabet. Go ahead, uh, just because they want to get a little rank and position, sold their souls, and they sold you out. Now, here's the deal, people. When computers first came out, remember the, remember the backup disks they were given that, mm-hmm. that they created for computers to where if, if the system fails? They had yep. everything on file. All they had to do is get the system fixed, throw it in the disk, boom, everything came back up. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And that was for that reason to where, one, at the end of the day, you could wipe out your system and start over fresh the next day mm-hmm. where nobody could get to it. Or a portable hard drive. That's what it was all. Yeah, those are, those are pretty nifty, tough. too. But this goes so far. Deep. Well, yeah, but, but see, the thing is, the idiots who think they run something mm-hmm. kept everything on a memory drive on system, and they were told, do never do that. Do not do that. That's what the hard drive backup disk is for, mm-hmm. to where your information is there, to where if somebody tries to hack into your system, they read a blank screen. Or exactly. they read what they call a home page. That's uh-huh. it. And that's mostly what, what system set up was mission of statement. Right. What the business does, what the company does, and that's all they got. There was no personal information or anything. But now because like the like uh, those few uh, VA employees who have so happened to lose their computers. Yeah, yeah that was wicked convenient. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, or the black bears that would, got smashed. Oops. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And I got a real cheap piece of property with a fridge on it. I want to say, you, Lori. Uh, yeah. It's, isn't, it, isn't that in Nevada? <laughs> <laughs> it's wherever you want it to be. Then the state, I'll, I'll, I'll have it there. And I'll okay. even make it ocean, ocean, ocean property. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, see? And see, yeah. that's how they think. They think we're so stupid. Right. That we can't see through this. I know something about computer systems. I know how to reboot my system. I know how to tear it, tear it down. I know how Brother, to tear it down if need do. Our if entire it. big progressive government needs a major enema reboot. Mm-hmm. Folks, we've run out of time for this segment. We will be back with the second hour of Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast. Thank you, Ed. God bless you, brother. Oh. We'll be back oh. after our sponsors. What a mess. Would odors, mold, and mildew describe your basement or crawl space? It doesn't have to be that way. Transform them into a fresh, healthy, usable one with the technologically advanced Wave Moisture Control Units. The computerized operation maximizes moisture control and also expels harmful radon, combustion gases, and numerous other pollutants. Dehumidifiers are old technology that do nothing for air quality and waste energy. Wave units are intelligent, self-monitoring, do not need maintenance, and will save you hundreds in electricity. Wave units are still running effectively 
effectively over 15 years. They've been tested and installed in public and military housing and by property managers nationwide. Buy a unit now, and if your home is not fresher and drier, you can return it for a full refund for up to 12 months. What have you got to lose? Call now. 1-888-618-WAVE. 1-888-618-WAVE. Or visit MyDryHome.com. That's MyDryHome.com. Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. You're listening to Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Truth, truth, truth. There was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free. It was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switch and bait, criticize and confiscate and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they forbid a child to pray. They say we need to spread the wealth. They pretend to guard the health of the feeble and the poor. While the hand they hold behind their back confuses and conceals the fact that the wolf is at the door. There's an unseen hand that pulls strings. It makes his little puppets dance to every song he sings as the night goes in. On a rising tide Look beyond the shadows Behold a pale horse ride Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN I'm your host, Tom Lacavera Stewart And your other host, Lori Anderson Folks, you can go to resurrecttherepublic.com That's resurrecttherepublic.com Click on that PayPal and support this broadcast Because this is just the beginning of what is, I assure you, to be some insane times. If you can understand, if you've been tuned in to the first part of this broadcast, and you can understand the depth and and the relevance of the information that we're giving you, we have uh, essentially been reporting on a national security violation of generational and epic proportions. Mm -hmm. And we have some callers on the line that have been patiently holding. Absolutely. Uh, I thank them for that. Uh, We do have Chris in Las Vegas. Chris, you're on. Welcome, Chris. Well, thank you so much, Lori and Tom. Hello, brother. Good to have you. You know, if this lady was working for the adversary, I don't think they could have done more harm if they'd been working (laughs) double time to accomplish it. Exactly. Right. Who needs the KGB? <laughs> well, and, and uh, as to Fox News reporting on it, well, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate to laugh because this is so serious, but how can you not? I mean, this is just, oh, wow, wow. Well, oh. I wonder, I wonder like... if I wonder if the media, uh, the mainstream media, um, talking heads that are actually ex-CIA would get concerned if they actually realized this was going on because their information will be in there too. I don't know if Anderson Cooper would. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Hey, I was well, thinking. I got, got another one on Fox News, uh, a blonde-headed younger fellow that's obviously an agent provocateur that's put in there to deflect and evade and to diffuse and mirror and, and all these other skills that Hitler Clinton employs day in and day out. So it's kind of like having Hitler on there, only a male body double with uh, blonde hair. True blonde oh, hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
you know, this is this story should be on in every newspaper, on every news yeah. broadcast across the nation. We we are we. This is a serious problem. We're talking about <laughs> the potential of of nuclear scientists. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I mean, just you you name it and 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 tag you're it, and these people have your personal. Very, very personal, very, very private information. In fact, your your fingerprints. It's it's almost like now, just about anything could happen, and and who would be to blame? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. here's this lady should be under a prison. She should yeah. literally be tried for treason along with everybody who should have, could have, or would have. Stop this from happening. All of them need to be round up. They need to be tried in a court, and they need to be lined up against the wall. Shot. I agree. And do you notice one common pattern, whether it's IRS, ATF, no matter what scandal it is, no matter what, they keep on throwing more money at them off of our backs, and (laughs) nobody gets fired, nobody goes to jail, nothing. I'm tired of that. Oh, so Lori yeah. and Tom, I used to actually have a top secret clearance with a key SSBI top secret oh, background investigation that yes, I carry. It's the same one that Monica Lewinsky had. I'm sure that'll make you feel secure. Yeah, now, right. at first, I don't remember the questions that they asked on that particular uh, SF-86 form, as you called it, to be quite well, so at least you didn't... so personal, so intimate and so in-depth to your deepest relations to be able to get your full depth and breadth of intel from the time you were incepted. Well, look at it this way, Chris. At least you didn't have to wipe your mouth to get it. That's true. I'm sorry. That's true. I'm sorry. And blue dress. Somebody said, somebody. <laughs> you know, and I hate to do this, guys, but I'm, I'm going to go there because y'all opened that door. Somebody <laughs> Somebody posted that they should have uh, Monica Lewinsky become president because at least she got the job done. That's hey! all. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she was the rabbi's daughter. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. You know, I, was, I didn't make that up. Somebody else wrote that, but it well, was, it was too funny. Apropos, and it was clean. Oh, and it, it was clean. God. So. Okay, how many of you realize this? Because we've been covering, the OPM is huge. So anybody who has ever at this point worked for the for the federal government or even, okay, if you've worked for the post office, you know, they call that civil service. But you or NGOs to- or private contractors. Did you say civil they ran- service? <laughs> 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 but, but, um, Think about this too, and I want to put this out there. Rand Corporation. Yes. yes. Overrule the posse comitatus because we've read your documents. Guess yeah. what? You have also been breached. Hurrah. Just want to put that out there. Yep. <laughs> you know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little irritated about this. I think <laughs> we know that the de facto cannot handle. Um, electronic communications, whether it be Hillary or whether it be these other agencies, I think they should be required to own no computers. They have to go back to pencil and paper, do actual files, and a daggone typewriter. What say you? Yeah, here, here. The same way with voting machines. That's it. It worked in the old days, and it's great for these days, and especially when you've got Hey, folks, let me, let, let me give you another agency, the mm. Federal Elections Commission oh, employees. Oh, my God, yes. I didn't even think about that one, Tom. No. Uh-huh. You're right. Uh-huh. Every bit of it. You're right. You're right. Okay, so everybody, I want to tell you something, and we'll probably stem back to OPM a little bit. But now you know why Hillary Clinton's been accepting money from the Saudis and the Chinese. Oh! Oops, oops. Uh, we didn't say that, did we? No. Uh, I said it. I went there. You know, well, so did Congress, so that's okay. Um, yeah. But anyway, how many of you are aware that there is hearings going on um, 
pretty much as we speak about Miss Clinton. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I knew. I knew that. September the 6th, Chairman Chavez, this was put in on, on the overhouse. On Chavez. The, yes. <laughs> if I get that right. He's just gonna have to forgive me. I swear. Sorry, Tommy. <laughs> anyway, in the over oversight and government reform committee, I had a press release on September the sixth. Um, he requested a review for obstruction of justice in the Clinton email case. Okay. Oh no wonder she collapsed. Right. <laughs> this is what this one says. It says today. House Oversight and Government Reform Chairman Jason Chavez, did I say Chavez, right? Chavez. sent a letter to the U.S. Attorney for District of Columbia requesting a review of evidence that may amount to the obstruction of justice and destruction of evidence by Secretary Clinton and her employees and contractors. Chairman Chavez also sent a letter to former Secretary Clinton's IT management company, Pallet River Networks, or PRN, for information related to potential evidence destruction. Excerpts from the letters are shown below, and this is some of the quotes. It says, in reviewing those files, the committee identified a sequence of events that may amount to obstruction of justice and destruction of evidence by Secretary Clinton and her employees. And wait, wait, wait. You mean when she wiped it with the cloth? <laughs> no, this is Bleacher? probably more, yeah, this is probably more referring to the hammers. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. She was referring to Monica Lewinsky when she was talking about that. I'm sorry. Right, Go ahead. right, 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 right. Okay. So, sec and her employees, contractors, including her attorneys, employees of the Pallet River Networks, and employees of Clinton Executive Services Corporation. In light of this information, the department should investigate and determine whether Secretary Clinton or her employees and contractors violated statutes that prohibit destruction of records, obstruction of congressional inquiries, and concealment or cover-up of evidence material to congressional investigation. In brief, the summaries of the FBI's interviews with a PRN engineer show that within days of a conference call with Secretary Clinton's lawyers, the engineer deleted archives of Secretary Clinton's emails despite knowing those records were covered by preservation orders and a subpoena from Congress. The sequence of events leading up to the destruction of Secretary Clinton's emails raises questions about whether Secretary Clinton, acting through her attorneys, instructed PRN to destroy records relevant to the then ongoing congressional investigations. And please, by all means, Tom, let's cover the collapse, okay? Oh, yeah. Right. Mike, yeah. you could be a doll. Can you play video number three? So oh, I'm looking forward Mr. This. Cooper, A, you get huge brownie points from the committee for showing up and having the guts to actually answer questions. We're very grateful for that. I'm also very grateful for your candid nature in expressing the idea that you don't have the expertise to even to answer those questions as thoroughly as possible. The problem I have, again, you, I believe you're doing the, the best you can, at least based on what the testimony I've heard thus far. Here's the problem. It's you, Mr. Cooper, with no experience, no dual authentication, no encryption, up against the Chinese and the Russians. Who do you think is going to win that one? That's what scares the living daylights out of us, is because the cavalier nature in which this was set up in some of the nation's most sensitive and secure information. That's the concern. Sure. Before the gentleman yields back, if I can, I appreciate the kind uh, comments. Um, but let's remember, we got multiple people pleading the fifth, uh, afraid of criminal wrongdoing. We also have an FBI director. One of the questions was, did you look at what Secretary Clinton said under oath? There are other equities that we have in the destruction of documents. Doc he said he didn't look at any of that. And so that was also part of his testimony. They didn't even look at that part of it. That's the imperative for us to, to do our jobs. But I do appreciate the gentleman's, appreciate him yielding. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yes. Christian, uh, my understanding from my experience in courts and law, which is pretty significant, anytime they give them a grant of immunity from prosecution, they must be willing to testify fully, completely, and forthcomingly. You're and correct. So and if they do understand. not, then they lose their immunity. That is exactly. Correct. Exactly. Yes. Well, and yep. I also heard. But keep Mr. in mind. Hold on now. Keep in mind that they could be 
offering testimony in in classified executive session. Well, that's true. Uh, I did listen to Chavis this morning, and I did hear him issue an immediate subpoena on the spot from his chair position to the FBI director for full disclosure of non-redacted information. <laughs> and, yes. He got pretty squirmy yes. there, I'll tell you. Let me tell you something, folks. I've been saying for a long time, and people have called me a bircher, and they've called me all these other things like it was a, <laughs> like it, like that's a bad thing. Right. When I try and tell you that these these people in our government have been not only working with but alongside and providing these communist nations direct aid in mm-hmm. achieving the information that they need to achieve and how I did I knew that it was happening. I knew by by just being a student of history that it was going on. I just couldn't quite put my finger on on exactly how it was going on. I know that there was money uh, uh, changing hands, but here you have it right here in a nutshell. Here is how our enemies know everything, and this is why these people continue to get large volumes of money, and also why those that are tasked with prosecuting them have failed to do so. What do they know about them? Mm-hmm. Here you go. Everything. This is why nobody's mm-hmm. prosecuted. Yeah. And it's a dog uh. and pony show because you are very right. Um, when somebody is given the immunity from prosecution, part of that deal always is that you have to be 100% truthful, you have to answer all questions, and that gives you the immunity. If you, you can't take a immunity deal and then plead the fifth. That's right, that's right. And, and Chris, 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 do me a favor, Chris, stay on the line. We have another caller I, I do need to get to. Chris, I want you to stay on for this. Okay. Yes, uh, J- James in Pennsylvania. James, you're on. Welcome. Greetings, brother and sister. Greetings. Greetings. Hey, how's my transmission? Is it coming in five by five? I'm on a cell phone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're You're clear. Ten two. Uh, Okay. (laughs) It's like there is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Right. Like (laughs) this. This is just it's music to my ears when I see the exposing of the criminality. Mm-hmm. The gross yep. criminality that this this government or whatever passes for government has become. <laughs> right. I mean, Cleptocracy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like whoa. You know, I mean, I I, I love uh, I love Chris's uh, his astute elucidation and and <laughs> words. Uh, you know, I can't. Can hardly, you know, I can't compete with him. <laughs> Chris does a great job. I mean, it's all good. as well as you two do, also. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, well, I, I consider Chris to be an asset to this show. He Absolutely. was, uh, he, he, he gave me refuge and he gave me aid when I was at Bundy. Uh, yeah. And we uh, shared some time, some experiences together and spoke with some people together (laughs) and we avoided prosecution together and and you know uh by the grace of god uh by the grace of god almighty um but anyway uh i consider chris almost to be like you know a part of this show (laughs) i really do (laughs) absolutely i mean it's like you know when the chips are down we should all be able to by the grace of God, come through for one another. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we got James there and the rest of you and the listeners. You remember that Loretta Lynch and James Tomey have a long history of mutual shared negotiated pretrial settlements and close prosecution agreements. And therefore, there was oh, no I way they could have possibly been competent witnesses because they were abjectly conflicted and bonded at the hip. Yeah, I even hear the cockatoo laughing in the background. <laughs> and you, you know, Comey was also involved with Whitewater, wasn't he? 
Well, if I'm not I mistaken, it was HSBC it, and, a big and I know he there. was, yeah, HSBC, and so was Loretta Lynch, yep. Yeah. And of course, connected with the Clinton Foundation and Clinton as well. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot to it. There's a lot of, uh, too much uh, familiarity over there in that uh, big old place in D.C. that's supposed to yeah. stay in there 10 miles square and doesn't. We've been bushwhacked. Bush is the bush and Clinton is the whacked. <laughs> that was pretty good, Tom. That was pretty good, Tom. I'm sorry. Oh. So, James, what do you what do you oh. think about this OPM breach? Because uh, we haven't heard from you about that one. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Is James still with us? No. Yeah, Are you still there, I'm, James? I'm just, I was just trying to pipe down my little piper bird. Uh, Oh, no, don't you worry about that bird. That's 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 almost. Uh, she's a, she, can the, she can be our mascot. No, the bird can be the whistleblower. Hey, the whistleblower. Now her name is Piper. You know, she kind of pipes up when she needs it. Oh, excellent. I miss my brother Michael Collins Piper. He and I used mm-hmm. to converse on a regular basis. You know, I said we'd, yeah. I, I did with Bob Chapman. Bob Chapman and I had a good rapport. You know, I was one of his most astute listeners to the program. But, you know, it's like, you know, I try to stay in tune and in touch with reality, you know, as much as possible. And, you know, I mean, we're, 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 it's getting down right now in my, you know, studied opinion. Uh, there's, you know, things are coming to a head, okay, in more ways than one. There we go with Mata Lewinsky again. <laughs> yeah, right. Well. <laughs> I'm that sorry. Was so wrong. That was so wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spit it out. She didn't swallow. She spit it out on the blue dust. You know? Oh, oh. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh but I'm bum. <laughs> Evidence gathering. Uh, okay, so I have a question. Yeah. Um, I have some good news. Should I break the good news? Wait, yeah. hold on a second. We gotta, we gotta make sure we don't have. Uh, 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 James, would you like to get any in any other comments before we, uh, before we get moved no, forward? Go, 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 go ahead and go ahead and continue with the uh, with the presentation. Because All I'm right, brother. But if you I'm want to stay on the line, no, 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 no. He's got the bird in the background. I want to hear this. So I know. Know. I've, okay. Okay. But but that's okay. That's okay. Feel free to call yeah. him with the bird chiming anytime, though, brother. Hey, we like our God. whistleblowers. Yeah. Well, yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, James. Thank you for calling, brother. Thank you. Thanks for calling. When, when she hears my voice in this tone, she tends to sound off. It's you know? all good. It's all good. It it's is all good. fine. Listen, it's fine. We like having a lively both. show. All yep. your efforts. I fully appreciate it. Let's get together. Oh, you're very Tell welcome, me, brother and sister. Well, okay. thank bless you. you. God bless you, I'll, and you I'll, just I'll, stay safe. I'll hang up and listen in. All right. Absolutely. absolutely. And before okay, now you were you were you were saying. Go ahead. Right. I want first. I I really want to know um, how much longer do we have before break? Because I'm going to read this to everybody, and it's going to take a few minutes. How long do we? Ha- how long, Mike? Six minutes, six minutes okay, before break. we've got enough. Okay, Go. to all of our listeners that believe in your unalienable right to have arms, listen yep. up. Missouri Republicans vote to override the veto of gun bill. So <laughs> let me tell you what's happening in Missouri, people. This was uh, reported on September the 14th by Kansas City. And uh, thank you to one of my very favorite followers, JT3%. Got this to me actually as I was on the show. And this is what it says. He said, it says, Jefferson City, for the second time Wednesday, Republicans turned to a parliamentary maneuver to kill a Democratic filibuster and force a vote on a bill. This time to override Governor Jay Nixon's veto of a bill eliminating training and permit requirements to carry a concealed gun in public. The maneuver known as calling the previous question, 
was once rarely used, only five times in the Senate from 1970 to 2001, when Republicans captured the majority, but it's now been used five times since 2014, including three times this year. After shutting down the debate Wednesday, the Senate vetoed to override the governor's veto on a 24 to 6 party line vote. The bill moved to the House where it was quickly approved, 112 to 41. It becomes law in 30 days. So everybody, previously, gun owners could carry a concealed weapon in public by passing a criminal background check. Oh, there's that OPM thing coming (laughs) up. And a competing a gun safety training class in order to get a permit. On the final day of 2016, legislative session, lawmakers approved a bill eliminating those requirements and allowing someone to carry a concealed firearm in public without, guess what, without a permit. You heard it right. Yes, yes. So Nixon vetoed the bill because he said it would allow individuals to legally carry a concealed firearm even though they have been or would have been denied a permit because of their background check revealed criminal offenses or caused the sheriff to believe that they posed a danger, unquote. Joining Nixon in opposing the bill were the groups representing law enforcement officers around the state, such as Missouri Police Chiefs Association. So everybody hear that? They're not constitutional. Along with the state's four Catholic bishops. Oops, they're not constitutional. Can we talk about judicial vicars? Proponents have argued that the change is about public safety. The legislation, according to the National Rifle Association, seeks to expand the fundamental right to self-defense of Missourians and strengthen their ability to protect themselves and their families. Oh, and not be, let me just add this, this is not in the article, and not be data breached by OPM. Okay. Go on, Missouri! And uh, Senator Brian... Munzlinger, if I pronounce that wrong, I apologize, a Republican from Lewis County who sponsored the bill, said it simply will allow law-abiding citizens to protect themselves from criminals, unquote. I am not going to read the rest of this. So congratulations, Missouri. You will be legally, legally, you heard me because you've already been lawfully allowed. So you will be legally allowed to conceal carry in 30 days without... Well, they always were. They always were. That's the truth. The no, truth I said it is, at legally and lawfully is two different things, Tom. Well, yes, yes, yes. That's They've true. They've lawfully but, been allowed to, but legally yes. they haven't. Now they're going to be both. So congratulations to Missouri. Anybody else out there would like to call in and give some comments and, and talk about maybe the OPM breach. Talk about the Hillary Clinton email scandal if you would like. Or even discuss the Missouri victory for all people's unalienable rights. Because as we all know, the state constitution limit the state, not the people. The federal That's constitution right. limits the federal, not the state, and not the people. It is not a bill of rights. It is a bill of limitations. So yes. anyone would like to call in, we would love to hear you call in god lines bless missouri yeah so call in lines are 512-716-1603 or you can call into 512-716-1883 or 512-716-1897 we want to hear what you think mm-hmm. we want to we want to hear what you think about the opm data breach can it possibly affect you i know it can affect you tom i know it can affect me yep. Yep. Well, sure can. And on that, we're going to go to break. Uh, Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast. Tom Lacabara Stewart, Lori Anderson. We will be right back. This is the most transparent administration in history. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org.
As a regular listener to Republic Broadcasting, you certainly understand the times and circumstances that we are living in. You certainly understand that the good times are over, and you certainly understand what we are heading for. Though we do not know what exactly is going to happen, we must assume that it's going to be a disaster. Are you prepared for that mess? Go to www.bugoutpanama.net and get the necessary information on our growing community of awake and prepared individuals, just like you. At www.bugoutpanama.net, you will learn how we are preparing on our farm, Finca Bayano, for what is coming. Emigrate while you still can to our village, where survival is of the utmost importance. Prepare. Don't despair at www.bugoutpanama.net. People love to shop. What if you could shop and it was actually good for you? What if you could actually purchase items that bettered your life? What goes into your body is important to what quality of life you have. How about shopping for items that better your health? Get the tea.com is that shopping place. We're not only tea, even though that's our number one seller, we are about helping your health. There's colostrum LD for those of you with autoimmune troubles. The product helps your stomach get on track. GI problems produce pain. Get relief with colostrum LD. How about some fat burners or maybe some joint or a power cleanse. There's so much to tell you with very little time. So get help health-wise at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Or you can call our friendly operators at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Get help and relief by going shopping. Shop at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Serving people with great products for over eight years. Getthetea.com. While the large majority of Americans have never heard of cryptocurrency, it is the medium of exchange of the future that has already begun. On the other hand, the large majority of RBN listeners are very aware of the corruption within the Fed and the trillions in counterfeit money and credit it has created. Well, would you like to do something about this? OneCoin, the fastest growing company of any kind in world history, will pay you to help do away with the Federal Reserve. Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile, but he surely developed many great improvements in the industry. In 1927, talking pictures made silent movies obsolete overnight, and email has practically done away with the need for a fax machine. With cryptocurrency, Bitcoin became the pioneer in 2009. But now OneCoin, as the first ever gold-backed cryptocurrency, has moved to the top of the industry in only two years, and its impact on the financial world could be devastating to the Fed. Bill Gates and Richard Branson and all the jillionaires are already acknowledging that this system of paying for goods and services is becoming what will be recognized as the new worldwide reserve currency. For more information, call Pat Shannon at 601-212-0911. Again, that's Pat Shannon at 601-212-0911. My name is Don Wiskin, and at 42 years old, I suffered a massive heart attack, lost 35% of my heart to damaged tissue, and was supposed to spend the rest of my life on disability. What did I do? I took Extendivite, a garlic and cayenne mix of seven herbs which rebuilt my heart and gave me back my life. For over 17 years now, I have made this formula available to you so you don't have to suffer the same thing I did. Clean your blocked arteries and strengthen your heart and boost your natural immune system. I'm 60 years old now and I still work every day. To get your Extendivite, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Extend your life with Extend Ovite. Mother of the four winds filled my sails, close the sea of years. With no provisions, there's but no Resurrect the Republic. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. I'm your host, Tom Lacavera Stewart, and I'm joined by Lori. Anderson, please go to resurrectorepublic.com, click on that PayPal button, send us your support. You are the only way we get paid, so keep in mind we are listener-funded, listener-funded. Keep that in mind, folks. Oh, all right, now we're back into it. Uh, I do believe we have another caller on the line. Uh, You you did ask for callers, and here we have Pat in Texas. Hi, Pat. How are you? Welcome to the show. Um, did you say that they don't have to register them now? In Missouri. 
in 30 days, they do not have to register. They do not have to get a background check. And they do not, let's see, um, they do not have to complete the gun safety training class either in order to get a permit. Wow. Well, I was just looking at uh, some little thing I had that's already been eaten up by bugs from 1991. And it said Mm -hmm. the the checks had to register their guns and the polls had to register their guns. It's just a way of letting people know you have one. Yep. Exactly. I, I don't care how they say, well, that information's confidential. Not really. Uh, no. <laughs> right? We, can, we know that now, don't we? <laughs> yeah, you've been talking about it all night. Nothing's confidential yeah. anymore. Right, okay. and then, you know, it always does lead to the confiscation issue, and, and you know, a lot of people think that, oh, that's just hyperboil, but a while back I was covering the UNSATT with Tom when everybody was focused on the Orlando shooting um, uh, over there against the quote-unquote ISIS murder at the, at the gay nightclub. What was actually going on is there was a UNSAT, UNA, UNODA meeting being held in New York to disarm American people. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the, the guy who shot Reagan, he got his gun legally, so... Uh, yep. And it was a twenty-two, and it was yep. a twenty-two. Yep. Yeah. And, and really, when it comes down to all this, when it comes down to all this, there, there, there is no such thing as government permission anyway, because there is a restriction upon government to where there is a right involved. No rulemaking is allowed. Period. Period. Well, who's, period. Who's the government anyway? We found out during Obamacare that everybody was anybody got exempted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. let other people get on. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, thank so you much dear. For thank your you. Call. Be sure to call back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so ma'am. if we have any other callers, please feel free to call us. We'd love to engage in conversation with our listeners. We love your support. Um, so, Tom, what do you think about? It? Isn't that great that Missouri? You know, states are well. Not well, I think it's a step, but to be, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to rain on the parade just a little tiny bit. <clears throat> it says that they don't have to do this, that, and the other thing to get their what? Their conceal permit. Right. No, to, to get their to permit yeah. to conceal carry. Well, excuse me, but why do they need to get a permit at all? That is my my two cents into this because as far as I'm concerned, uh, the Second Amendment is a restriction upon government. Government is not allowed to require any permit right. whatsoever. Right. Even felons that used to get out of prison That's right. in the state they of Florida used to be given a, a mule, uh, either a pistol or a rifle, I forget, and a $20 gold piece. You know, when you did your time, your time was up. That was even a felon. So we're talking about people that have never committed a crime before in their lives having to still request from the government. Now, I do say it is a big step. In yeah. the right direction. However, in light of the the situation that we've just seen, mm-hmm. with the the there is no such thing anymore. There is not one government official that can look any of us straight in the eye and say that there is any such thing as secure data in the hands of federalists. Oh, it exactly. just doesn't exist. Well, I will tell you something else. This bill does, Tom. Okay. Because I said I wasn't going to read the rest of it, but I'm going to I'm going to go down and let you know, because it's it's also got it's also says that the wide ranging bill would also reduce the penalty for carrying a firearm into buildings where it is not allowed from a felony to a misdemeanor and implement a so-called stand your ground law. In other words, the castle doctrine, it's going to expand the castle doctrine to permit to permit, don't you love that, invited guests in a home to use deadly force on intruders. Well, I don't need that permission because if you come into my home and you're not invited, you're and aced. I know you're there to hurt me, I've you're got news for you. I am not a female that is going to scream for help. I'm going to exercise very strongly my second Amendment. Okay. I'm going to become Just like saying. a Swiss man. I'm going to become like a Swiss man and make cheese <laughs> out of you. Well, you know, and, and I am a very calm individual, but if you break into my home, 
and and I know that you are a threat to me, I will defend myself at all costs, and I do mean that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And it's not, you know what, it's not just confined to your home either. Anywhere that you are, you you have the, the inalienable right, the right to defend yourself that, that is yes, not you given to you by a bunch of bureaucrats right. uh, in Washington, D.C. or any state house. You have right. that right, period. As yes, long as you're acting it. in honor and you're not harming anyone else and you're not right. putting anyone else in danger... Just like that, that young lady from Texas, I, I remember her, her telling her story about how that man drove through the front of that place that her and her parents were eating, the madman. You can't control a madman. A madman can get a gun anywhere in the black market. And this guy right. drove through the front of this building and starts shooting people. Mm -hmm. She went to go reach for her pistol instinctively in her, in her purse. purse. And yep. yep, it was in her truck. And her mother and father died that day. And I can assure yep. all of you out there, it wouldn't be my mother and father that would be dead. Right. No right. way. And, and you know, and she uh, went on to speak, I believe it was in the Texas legislature. And, um, and she, she told she them, I don't blame the criminal, I blame you. Because yep. you're the one who disarmed me, not the criminal. He yep. was a psychotic a, rabbit. A nutcase, yep. Individual. You are the ones who stopped me from being able to protect my... And by the way, wasn't it their 40th... It was either their 40th or 50th wedding anniversary that day that they were yep. murdered. Yep. Yeah, that was really sad. Yep. Very sad situation. You can't get angry at a schizophrenic for thinking that they're Napoleon. Right. You can't get angry at some madman for doing some stupid act. And, and when it comes down to it, that chick out there in Las Vegas in your neck of the woods there, Chris, she, she got behind the wheel of a car... And she just turned right into traffic. She was nuts. She just turned right into traffic and mowed people down like she was in a lawnmower and just brrr. And you, at any point in time, this this whole thing with with uh, with gun violence, which is a progressive created term that doesn't even exist. There is no such thing. It requires the action of a human or an animal to commit violence upon something or someone. Right. It's an action. Yep. Yep, and it has been as, as old as the dawn of time, right. from knives, swords, and even stones. Uh, mm -hmm. you, what is it? We're, we're going to call it uh, stone violence, or, or uh, I mean, even domestic violence. Yeah, you know, When you raise your hand to another human being that has not uh, put your life in danger, and you strike them, you're wrong, period. It is the action of the individual, and they want, they want this collectivist view that it's not the individual, it's, and of course, none of these people want to take individual responsibility for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to blame uh, everything. They want their little safe spaces, these special little snowflakes they have out there. They want their little safe zones and safe spaces, and universities aren't an intellectual environment anymore. They're a home created to make people feel safe. Get the hell out of here. I create my own safe space. Yes, I do too. It's called Smith, <laughs> Smith and Wesson and Armalite. You know, um, I'm going to tell you something funny because, um, it, it, I mean, it's no secret that I carry, you know. <laughs> yep, yep. So some of the neighbors that, that have gotten to know me, some of them used to be terrified of, of weapons. And, of course, they now are not because I have educated them and, and they've seen that, okay, it's not the weapon uh, they they realize now assault weapon is a joke because assault is a verb yep. and it is an action and a weapon is a tool. I have never seen an, I have never seen an AR-15 jump up off a table and smack someone in the mouth. If you do record it, because I'm going to tell you, we will become very wealthy. And I would like to see the first gun sit on the stand. Uh, as a defendant, to be honest with you, since, you know, it is an assault weapon and it's the what creates the problem, then yep. why can't it be tried in a court of law? <laughs> <Because they never laughs> so anyway, oh, great this, argument. This this neighbor um, and, and anyone who knows anything about me, you can probably tell from my pictures. I'm not a tall person, people. I am very short. So I am literally just barely above five foot okay i mean not above five foot under five foot excuse me i told a, t a fib and i didn't mean to um 
I am actually four eleven and a half feet tall. So and I carry my forty five on my side all the time. So I have gotten a nickname from some of the neighbors and they call me Annie Oakley. Yeah. Annie yeah. Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you know, thank God, thank God I have never, ever, ever had to pull my weapon on somebody. Am I prepared? Yes. Am I trained? Yes. Do I ever want to have to do that? No. And I pray to God it stays that way. But I am prepared just in case. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I want to talk to ladies out there about because there's a lot of ladies out there that want to say women's rights. Oh, give me a break. No, no, no. Work with me here, Tom. I will. I'm going to tell you something about women's rights. Is not your ultimate right to be able to protect your life and the life of your your offspring? It's your responsibility. It is not only your responsibility, it is your duty, and it is your right. Yep. It is, you are mandated maternally, you know, and how anyone can say that they are for women's rights and for gun control, that false sense of security yeah. uh, is is beyond me because Orwellian group think if you try to disarm me from being able to protect my children that are with me or my grandchildren that are with me or my family members that are with me or my friends that are with me or even people whom are not related to me and or me to protect myself then you are not pro women's rights period mm-hmm. Well, now, what, we're, we're talking about a whole different kind of feminism. That, well, that, that, I know, I know, I know. But I'm just, you know, we have to do that rules for radicals in reverse. Okay? Yes. So yes, let's put the do. truth back on them and let's hold them to their own little propaganda stuff. Let's hold them to their little quotes. Women's rights. It is my right to not have to go in public unarmed to possibly be raped by some daggone criminal or to be attacked or to be murdered. <laughs> By some nut job. Did you say? Did you say? Did people. you say, Dago? Yes. Uh, I love you. <laughs> yes, oh, the daggum criminals. Uh. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I'm talking about real criminals. I'm not talking about the code criminals. You know. Yeah I'm, yeah. I'm talking about the ones that really go after people. And then, then what kills me with this is people really want uh, on the other side. They really want us to support all this stuff. While they want us to get permission from the ATF, by the way, who's probably also been breached because it is a government agency yep. by OPM. And they want us to get permission from the ATF, who openly has been busted running not only guns, but stronger munitions to Mexican drug cartels and other agencies. The DEA has been busted and CIA also has been busted trafficking drugs into our union. So please explain to me why I'm going to ask another criminal for permission to... Isn't that insane? That is definitely the definition of insanity, Tom. You've raped me, you've pillaged me, you've fleeced me. Can I have permission to get the hell out of here? Why am I going to ask permission from a criminal if I can have something to protect myself? Yeah. And it's a shame it is that there are a lot of good people working for these various agencies. I've yeah, met them, and they've I've talked to them. Exposed. Yeah, they've just been exposed. Now, there's an internal fight. You and I would agree with that. There's an internal fight within almost every one of these agencies because you have the good ones and then you have the corrupt ones. And the good ones yeah. are really trying to fight in Well, they're, they're running them off. They are running them off by... Oh, my God, they're running them off. And now the good ones, you know, the good ones, even the bad ones, their information out there, their family's information out there, their kids' information, their grandkids' information, their neighbors' information, you know. And then what about NSA? Congratulations, Uncle Sam. (laughs) Thank you, Patriot Act. What about NSA? Oh, don't even get me started. Right. Uh, so then they oh, not only the those, data they centers, emails, phone records. What else do they have, Tom? Oh wow! Right, Ed is back on. Um, would you like to 
pick him up? Because uh, go ahead and 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 uh, come on in on the call, Ed. Ed, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hey, how are you? I got some information I'd like to share. Sure. Go ahead. Something to look up. What okay. would everybody say if Miss Hillary was already dead? Ah, who cares? Well, <laughs> wait a minute. Not Obviously, soon enough. York, a, a New York news station leaked it, uh, and all of a sudden, when they leaked it, it they cut off the show. Yeah, yeah, I've known My that for two was, days now. Yeah. Um, there, there was rumors that stemmed out of that because of the collapse. Oh, it, it's distraction, brother, and, from what we talked well, I mean, about it, tonight. It, it, look, she's got a double that makes ten thousand dollars a month. Right. Yeah. Now that's pretty steep monthly pay. I wish I may have got money like that for month, for, for for doing something. Okay. Look, man. Look, man. And don't get don't just, get distracted. Don't get distracted I'm by the, saying, the bread I'm and circus, saying, man. I'm, I don't take care. I could as a I could care I, less. Let me. I'll I'll even give you for instance. I could care less if a phantasm came and and inserted himself via her anus and she became uh, a completely different person. I don't care. You know why I don't care, Ed. I don't care because these puppets, we have been giving them far too much attention and we have been giving them far too much of our time and our consideration. If she has a body double, I say to her body double, I at least I hope you do a better job than that hag did. Well, I can <laughs> tell you, Tom, for the body double thing, it's pretty obvious <laughs> that she does. And I'll tell you why the body yeah, double I is, know, I know. is thinner, is is thinner than Hillary. Better looking. Yeah, well, better looking. Yeah. But you know what? Here's what I'm saying though, folks. It doesn't matter. It right. really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, we need to do everything from local and move it up and that is really what the issue has been this entire time I think is what Tom is trying to get yep. you to understand. Because we nothing, have had the largest security is be breach in Washington. Yep, we have had the largest security breach in our nation's history and mm -hmm. it is Washington D.C. and the office of the presidency and every, mm -hmm. every other agency out there known to us it is a rat it's a wrap. They have no trust. They have no authority. They have no security. They have now can be compromised in a myriad of variety of forms. They have lost any legitimacy that they have. And I tell you, if, if I was the governor of, of any given state, I would publicly declare my separation from yep. that, that, that behemoth of a monstrosity, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, I would I would declare myself it by for the national for the state security of the nation state that the governor uh, governs. I would declare myself completely severed from any computer system, from mm -hmm. any jurisdiction, from mm -hmm. anything and everything related to Washington D.C. I would say, you know what? Keep the ten mile square. And stick it where the sun doesn't shine. At and this Tom, point, and what Tom, difference? What difference does it make no. at this point? And Tom, <laughs> and Tom, to be honest with you, because of that, that corporation has broken their agreement with the states because yep. they haven't held with their agreement for the uh, immigration. They haven't held with their agreement for the security. They haven't held yep. with their agreement about all uh, sorts of other things. They violated the contract, so they breached the contract. Yep. So thus, they could pull away from because of breach of contract. Which what does it say in the well, declaration well, about when they well, become destructive to the means by which they were created? It is our right and our duty. duty. Sorry. Mm -hmm. and I will well, go by that document. Apologize. Overrides every single law out there. People, you know what? We don't talk about the Declaration of Independence enough. It, it absolutely and completely overrides 
anything and everything once you've discovered that they have become destructive to the means and purpose by which they were created was to protect and preserve the rights and liberties of the people and I would consider national security to be a number one priority in that task it is a wrap declaration of independence time that's what it is well see I mean Lori made a good statement if you look at the decades of breach of contracts alone to each and individual state yeah. That gives the state uh, nullification, nullification automatically because they can yep. do their own agreement. Uh, you breach contract, bye bye. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you take it to if you take it to court. Guess what? It, you're going to pay the bill because you're going to be proven guilty, and you're going to have yep. to pay the bill too. So uh, yeah, why don't proven. you just uh, pick up and go by? Consider the source, though, in the, exactly. these courts, because yeah. you don't get any kind of just verdict in these courts. What? We have we, we already have justice in the declaration itself. What we need to do is we need to find, and for lack of a better uh, term or word, we need to find the balls to enforce it. Well, see, here's the thing, Lori. Or yes. Tom, uh, if anybody, like with Lori and Chris Ann Hall put them, you know what a friend of mine says, why aren't people putting means on people? He says, right. He says that used to be a big thing back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. They didn't take you to court. They just put a lien on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that just mm-hmm. froze everything. That just stops you right dead in your tracks. He goes, when you can't right. get into your account, you can't mm-hmm. sell or buy anything on your property or nothing. He goes, then that even forces the court's hand to actually uphold the laws upon yeah. it. And... He says it's simple, it's cheap, and he says it saves a hell of a lot of headache. Right, and but that, you have that, to be very careful when you do that because there have been individuals who have done it. And I think that's probably why it's kind of faded off a little bit because they didn't dot their I's and cross their T's. So they ended up going to jail for doing those liens against certain judges, as a matter of fact. Yeah, but you know what? They're, they wrongfully went to jail, just like these uh, Carl yeah, Swenson down there. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Swenson in, in Georgia, where he walked in to, to do a citizen's yeah. arrest. Well, I read a piece on that, and it, it actually said, they actually said, well, who does a citizen's arrest in today's day and age? Yes, yes, Excuse and I'm going to be doing an interview with him and uh, Judge Nelly very good, soon. Good, good, yes. very good, because when I heard that, who does yep. a citizen's arrest in today's day and age? That's your well, argument? It was just That's your wrong. argument? Yeah. Really? Yes, I did, yeah. Who but exercises it's their First Amendment right to free speech these days? It's so antiquated, isn't it? <laughs> but citizen's <laughs> arrest is in, every, is in is every state's judicial books. Yes, it is. Yep. yep. And they, they did every bit of it lawfully. Every. Yep, every right by the book. They're using their law. law. Using their laws, yes. And their codes. Yeah, there isn't law. There's just codes, Tom. Yes, 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 yes. 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 See, the thing is, it was just something something I brought up just because people are feeling, okay, they would like to see what the world's doing here. You know, like Britain did the Brexit and Ireland, Iceland took their country and bank and government back. And it's happening around us. And bits sure. and pieces here are happening, but the thing is, I'm trying to I'm trying to give something some hope to people to where they said, okay, well, this is what we can do. To well, where- there's some breaking stuff that's going to be coming up soon. I cannot speak of it yet, but I promise you, it will be on this radio show when it is allowed to be public. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I know because when I, you know, I always... There's I a mean, lot honestly, happening behind the scenes. We'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah, so, Ed, there's a lot going on that we're not allowed to speak about yet. Well, if I oh, can do and it, we ran, help, let me know. I appreciate that, we brother. You do, time, you do. Thank you. thank you for calling. Join yep. us next time, everybody. Yep. Resurrectpublic.com. Click on that PayPal button and help us out. You are our life's blood. We will be back. Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast. Tom Lackabara Stewart, Lori Anderson. Lori Anderson, God bless you. Good night, everybody. God bless. Semper Fidelis, and always watch your backs. Yes, ma'am. Good night, everybody.